there's no place I'm more comfortable. So having the conversations is is maybe easier for me than maybe somebody coming in from outside. It's um, it's where I'm comfortable. Eric, you're an athlete who listened earlier. You're an athlete who listened earlier. So much success in that here. What do you feel like you have left to prove this all? Um, I, I don't think it matters what you've done in the past. In our game, you earn your stripes every day. Um, that's, that's how I've always felt. I hate the, uh, the saying, I've arrived. We're all still arriving. And if you continue, the day you stop, people are going to pass you right by. Good point. Yeah, Gary, uh, you mentioned uh, David Bell and the Bell family. You've got a relationship with Buddy in particular, right? When this process was starting to go down fast, uh, how much did, did you process that? Have you reached out to David or Buddy and, and talked to them? No, I haven't. Um, you know, I'm sure. There's probably mixed feelings, you know, from, from Buddy, uh, which I totally understand. Buddy's like my big brother. So much of how I view the game of baseball came through Buddy. He hired me as a minor league manager with the White Sox. He hired me as a third base coach with the Detroit Tigers. So there's, I mean, he's like my big brother. Um, so regardless of where I work or who I work for, he will always be my big, my big brother. Gary, this organization hasn't won a playoff series since 1995. Were you given any promises that they will put a uh, certain player, uh, players on the field for you, or did you ask for that? Uh, did you ask for them to go out and get X amount of players to uh, before you took the job? Uh, never even brought it up. We're going to start our meetings this afternoon after I get rid of this and put on something I can actually breathe in. <laughs> um, you're going to you're going to hopefully find. I hope you never hear me talk about payroll, things like that. What I care about is the players that we have, trying to get them to be the best baseball team they can be. Whether they're 20, whether they're 30, or whether they're 40. And there'll never be an excuse when we play a game or lose a game on our youth or our payroll. Once the game starts, it doesn't matter. Again, I know what my job is, but I don't need to be the general manager. I don't need to be the president. I just want to try to be the best manager I can be. Terry, congrats. What's your challenge for LA Naval Cruz when you sit down and have, maybe you've already had this conversation, out of the gate for this young shortstop? Um, I spoke to him like I did everybody the last couple of days. And again, it, it's my biggest goal is to get to know guys. Because if you come in going 110 miles an hour, you know, again, you got to see what makes people tick and, and how the best way to get to people. You know, the goal is for our small club to play aggressively and intelligently. All without the other doesn't really work very well. So spring training will probably have a little bit more priority on doing those types of things, getting to know each other. Because I think the best way for them to play is not for me to tell them to go from point A to B to C, is to kind of let them be loose and free, but also playing the game correctly. Uh, Terry, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, yes, um, you obviously have managed in Philadelphia, Boston, Cleveland, very different markets all of them, but you have core principles as a manager. How are you going to establish those with a new team set championship expectations? Well, I mean, that's the goal. That's the goal every year. And that's why I started reaching out to the players right away. I don't want to use it as an excuse that I'm new or we don't know each other. I need to get to know these guys fast. Because the more you get to know them, like I said earlier, you, I think players like being coached. I think they enjoy working hard. But you got to be organized. And, and we will be. And we'll get after it. But, but People talk about having fun. I think what I think is being enjoyable is playing the game right. And, and to be honest, I'm trying to kick somebody's ass. That's what I think is enjoyable. 
I go in, um, what specifically were your impressions of the roster as you started this process, and how big was your confidence in the roster and your decision to take the job? So, so the last part again. How big was your confidence in the roster in your decision to take the job? Uh, this was an extremely talented young team. Um, that excites me a lot. Uh, talking to them on the phone, uh, I got I got I got pretty fired up. They they're, they're, they seem like terrific kids and. They, they seem eager, and again, this is a week after a long season. I remind myself that, you know, I'm all wound up and you know, I'm ready to go right now, and these guys just got done playing a long year, and they were terrific to a person. And Terry, welcome to Cincinnati. Uh, you mentioned that you reached out to some of the staff members. Are, are there any existing relationships with anybody else in the organization, and have you or you know, the gentlemen to your side made any decisions about any guys specifically that would be retained in some way? We need to start. We've obviously talked a little bit, but we didn't want to get ahead of ourselves. Um, Colin, who's here today, actually was with me for a little bit in Cleveland. Um, I don't want to leave anybody out. That I, just because my world is going a little bit fast right now. Um, I know the clubbies. I know Mark and Rick. When I used to, uh, in 87, when I used to pinch you, then I'd make a quick out. Like, I was really good at that. <laughs> Rick, Mark, and Bernie, you know, they would, I would come in to take my shoes off and put my turfs on, and they would be standing at the door of the, the old riverfront, and I'd be dragging in with my back like, look, they'd be waiting in there like this <laughs> every time. So they like, like family. Terry, you're a uh, respected by better players and younger players, uh, wherever you've been. What is, what, when you're talking with a young clubhouse, what is your style of a guy that makes, repeatedly makes mistakes, makes, makes running mistakes, feeling mistakes? Are you a guy that uh, benches a guy? Do you pull him behind closed door and let him have it? Or what, what is your style when it comes to that kind of stuff? Um, I've probably done a little bit of both of those. Um, again, until you know who you're dealing with, I don't think there's a blanket way of saying you're going to deal with something. I do know when something goes wrong, my goal is to not have it go wrong again. You know, if you get in the habit of meeting a player at the top step of the dugout, you know, he's all amped up in the game, he's probably mad, I'm mad, you're going to butt heads. Okay, that's not really going to accomplish much, you know, except maybe have an eruption. The goal is to just not have it done again. You know, the mistake happened over and over, and that's on me to figure out how to do that. Terry, you said you were intrigued by the roster, uh, and said the whole process felt right, but what convinced you, and what personal boxes did you have to check that convinced you that it would feel right for the next three plus years? What, did you, what point did you have to get to personally to know that you could sustain the excitement that you obviously feel about the team right now? That's actually the easiest question I've had yet. Uh, people, when Dick and Brad came out, it felt good right away. And they're, they're sitting on my couch, and my couch is broken. And they stepped <laughs> down into the couch. And, you know, like, it just felt good. And you know, the, the last 11 years for me in Cleveland, I love the people I work with. And these guys reminded me so much of them that it just felt comfortable right away. I go with Dick and Brad for once. Uh, you two, when did you think that hiring Tito was a possibility? And um, was this top of the list? And obviously, it came together quickly, so there wasn't much of a list? Yeah. Well, I mean, there was definitely a list. It, we, we, like Dave gave go on Sunday night, we, got together on Monday and then on the road, met with all the players and staff uh, while we were on the road. And then, you know, I, I actually talked to Marty, uh, Marty reached out, connected uh, Terry and I, and, and uh, you know, reached out to, hey, uh, would you have interest? And he said, yeah. So we talked about meeting somewhere, and Brad and I just decided we're going to go out to Tucson, and, and we went out to Tucson, and, you know, I didn't know when it was a possibility. I, you know, it was the feeling out process, I guess. And, sat down and started talking, it just seemed really natural. It was a great conversation right from the beginning, and, and I felt good almost out of the shoot. And when Terry started using we, we, we in the conversation,
Patriot, I was like, man, this is a world saying Patriot. Um, I mean, it was red, I think, I don't know if it was red now, but we walked out there and it, it was kind of similar feeling right out, straight out of the gate. Yeah, nothing really to add. I, I think the more we spoke to people, you know, we, we went to Cleveland, obviously, which, which helped us. We got to speak to a lot of Cleveland people. Um, I spent a lot of time with Tom Hamilton there, and I've known Tom forever. And, and the more people we spoke to between Cleveland and the Chicago trip, the more it felt like Tito not only was at the top of the list, but had really separated himself at the top of the list. And, um, you know, by the time he agreed to meet with us, Nick and I said, we, we just got to go. We, we need to get out there. We need to do it as soon as possible. And like these guys have said, that when we sat down and started talking, the more he talked, the more he got on the edge of the seat, the more you could see, like, okay, this guy's ready to manage again. Um, so that took that question out. We talked about the help. We joked about it that he did offer to jump up and do jumping jacks if we needed him to. Um, <laughs> Thank God they didn't ask me to do that. <laughs> um, so like they said, I mean, the more we talked, the more it just felt like a natural fit. You know? Terry, as someone who's had as much success as you've had as a manager, what would you define as success in year one as a director? You know, I think you need to be careful answering stuff ahead. Um, I, I really believe, you know, in baseball, you, you, you try to learn from your mistakes and move on quickly. If you don't, you kind of get like a hangover effect. If you look too far ahead and miss what's right in front of you, in our game, you don't know what's, you know, injury-wise, if you lose your entire starting staff, you know what, your, your goals may change a little bit. That's why I just want to try to get the most out of everybody that comes through our door. Like in spring training good year, if we have 65 guys, there's going to be a number of non-roster, there's going to be some young kids, 26 are going to make our ball club on opening day, but it's our responsibility to try to get the most out of everybody that comes through those doors, and that's what we'll do. Yeah. I'm kind of curious about your the offseason, your first time away from the game for a long time. Did you follow the game closely, like on television or, or anything like that? I found myself watching more baseball this year than I probably have in a long time. Got to be the last couple of years in Cleveland. I'd watch like the team we were going to play next. Just, a, just not a habit. This year, you know, I certainly watched Cleveland play a lot because I was still technically a, I'm not even sure what my title was, but I had something there. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd turn on a game like you know, the Baseball Channel, and I'd turn on, I'd see like oh, oh the Angels are three to three in the eighth, and I'd turn that game on. Just to, you know, so I probably watched more baseball this year than I have in a while. What do you remember from opening day 87? And how important to you are the traditions that carry on here? Since what I remember about opening day is, one, I was in the lineup and I wasn't expecting to be. I remember telling Buddy Bell, like, God, buddy, I wanted to make the team. I didn't know how I want to play. <laughs> <laughs> and then I actually hit a home run on opening day. And then from there, the season kind of went down, you know, <laughs> um, for, for pretty much the whole year. Yeah, we heard a lot about your health coming out of last season. Uh, what, what's your health like now? You look like you swim down quite a bit. Did, did, did I read right? Did you have surgery in the offseason? Also, just a follow-up to that. After going through this process, do you think you'll actually never retire? Okay, you got to okay, now you got to know your audience. So one at a time, I will never remember the second question. Um, the, yeah, my health. You, you know what? It's real. I mean, I've, I've, I've had a lot of things go wrong. Uh, God, I didn't even really play that much. If I played a lot, I'd probably really be a mess. But I, I took care of myself this year, and I got I got into a routine or a habit where. I'd have a surgery when the season was over, I'd work real hard, and then I'd get beat up again when the season started. Being away for a year, it allowed me to take care of myself, probably for the first time. And, and I did, I, I lost weight, and I still have a ways to go. But I feel like I'm in a position where I can 
have enough energy to do the job the way I think you're supposed to. Because that wasn't how it was at the end in Cleveland. And like I said, I felt like I was shortchanging people. And so the follow up to that is, is as good as you feel now going through this process, do you think you'll actually retire from baseball at some point for real? Um, you know, I don't think I'll ever fully get out of baseball. Um, I, don't, I don't think I've ever wanted to. Uh, you know, the managing part, you know, I, like I said, I don't look too far ahead. I just try to kind of do what I'm supposed to right now and see how long that goes. But, you know, it helps certainly plays a part in that. But as long as I love the challenge and I'm able to do it, um, I don't think we need to talk about retirement. Terry, uh, you and Marty have maintained a great relationship over the years. Um, did, can, you, can you talk about your relationship with him, what it meant to you, and also did he play a role in you taking this job? So, so Marty and Amanda actually came out to my house in February, and we played some golf and you know, obviously had some laughs and caught up and everything. I don't, a lot of people probably don't know this, but in 04, when we were making our run into the World Series, Marty would leave these messages. And I'm trying to think how to say this. If I played him in public, he'd probably get arrested. <laughs> and I would play him on the bus, put him on the speaker on the bus, and play for the coaching staff. And by the time we got to the hotel or the ballpark, they would be in tears. He'd be like, he's your friend? <laughs> Terry, um, we've seen in the recent years Bruce Bochy come out of retirement, win a World Series. Dusty Baker win a World Series. What is it about managers like yourself and those guys that have experience that are still available, still able to play in today's game and, and follow through right now? I think it's probably different everywhere. Everybody's situation is different. Um, in, in the case of those guys, they're really good. And they've been good for a long time, and they have really good teams. Um, you saw this year, like, you know, Bosch, they took a step back. They had so many injuries, they took a step back. He's still one of the greatest managers that's ever, that ever been. Um, again, uh, I don't think it matters your age, as long as you have the energy and the you know, ability to do what's necessary in today's job. Terry, what kind of impact did Pete have in that? season on you? Well, you got to remember, see, I, I, I played with Pete in 1984 in Montreal. And, you know, I, anybody that is a teammate of Pete's, you know, we were young, it was Wally and myself and Brad Mills, we thought Pete walked on water. And as a teammate, you know, he treated us kids like gold. So when I came over to play, I came over to non-roster and actually made the team. Um, Part of what hurt me so much is I felt like I, was, I let Pete down because I was so bad because he had put his faith in me. Um, you know, and I know what Pete means to this area. And, you know, I know there's some things that are hard to figure out. But, and, and I'm pretty honest about it, I have zero ability to not be biased when it comes to Pete just because of my feelings for him. How similar are your philosophies on player development and managing and in the modern game with the front office? And how do you see yourself having the conversations and figuring out how you guys are going to do things together? Well, we're going to get started on that this afternoon. Um, we, don't, we don't need to make out the lineup for May, March 27th today. But what we do is start to be prepared. And you know, there's steps along the way during the winter as you get ready for a season. But we don't need to make a lineup out today. That, that doesn't make any sense. But I think the biggest thing I need is to do a lot of listening and get up to speed as quick as I can so that's never an excuse that I'm new. Anything else? All right, that's the end of the press conference.